well friend uh, you must have heard all this thing that a thorough uh, exam clean examination is required most of most of the teachers must have told you this but as far as i am concerned please understand the sequence is the most essential thing if you follow a particular sequence throughout your career throughout your training you will never miss a filing during the exam so as far as i am concerned thorough clean examination fine but sequence is the single most important thing as far as i am concerned well uh, there is a, the sequence is as uh, you must be seeing on your uh, uh, screens about inspection palpation movements deformity measurements and special tests i'll proceed according to this plan only well i'll not uh, go into any details of the gate since uh, dr sumit already covering it i'll simply since it is a relevant thing i'll simply mention two or, these are the important gates which are pathological gates which happen in the hip joint disease i am not discussing any details just a few seconds uh, clips with the with the, with the catching catch frame for everyone now this is a uh, antalgic gait the gait with the reduced stance face no further discussion i think dr sumit will cover it turn number gait lurch on the affected side when it is in the stance face the short limb gait up and down movements of the uh, on the short limb side when it is in the stance face and in a short limb gait is not unusual to find uh, one or two elements of uh, pathological gaits combining like in this patient is a short limb plus tendon bar gait i don't think i'll discuss anything more about the gait now this tendon bar test uh the term test sometimes it is sometimes it is included in the special test but i think it is not a bad idea that before you ask the patient to lie down to conduct this test to make the thing simpler for the patient and for you also now this is the example of a normal situation when the patient is standing on both the sides everything is on the level the i mean you are supposed to examine the patient from the back appropriately undressed this is a child who so is completely dressed otherwise appropriately undressed and you are supposed to see the level of the posterior spinal spines and the gluteal folds while inspecting from behind uh in a normal situation when the patient stands on the on one side the other side posterior spine posterior spinal spine rises a little and the opposite side gluteal fold also rises a little this is a normal situation what happens when there is a abductor weakness on a, a because of the hip joint disease this is what happens when hands on the affected side the opposite posterior superior posterior superior iliac spine instead of going up it goes down because the abductors are weak on this side the abductors are weak on the right side so when the patient stands on the right side the left sided uh, posterior superior iliac spine instead of going up is going down and the gluteal fold is also going down gluteal bulk or gluteal fold is also going down instead of going up this is a classical tendon bar sign the next video shows you how to examine a patient with this test as i told you already you must examine the patient from the behind ask the patient to uh, um, show show his back towards you ask him to first stand on the sound limb this is a normal situation his left lower limb is is normal that is why the right upper limb right gluteal uh, fold is going up now when he when he stands on the right side the left gluteal fold goes down the left superior iliac spine tends to go down and patient lurches on the right side this is a classical tendonberg sign now there is some test called assisted tendonberg test if a patient is unable to stand on single leg stance the examiner may provide him assistance to stand now this patient has got a weak abductor mechanism on the right side he is not able to stand on the right side so we we are giving him we are conducting a assisted tendon bar test in this patient first he is asked to stand on the normal side which he is able to do nicely no problem 
the moment we ask him to stand on the affected side, that is the right side, he puts extra weight with the help of his left hand on the patient's right hand, upon the clinician's right hand, and only then he is able to stand. Please notice that the patient is putting extra uh, weight on clinician's right hand side with his left hand. This is assisted Tannenberg test. Now, after the after we have seen the gait, we have conducted the Tannenberg test. Then we come to the attitude of the limb. The, we are going as per the plan which I had shown you earlier. Well, one can make out that the limb may be in a normal position. You can see that the, in the in the first picture, the patient's right limb is, the, is in external rotation, but in while on the other picture, the limb is in internal rotation. So attitude of the, attitude of the limb should be noted by the clinician. Now this is a typical example of a, a attitude of the limb when there is a posterior dislocation of the hip joint. There is flexion, there is adduction, and internal rotation. You can see the uh, axis of the same patient with the typical attitude of the limb. Now inspection. Once you have done, once you have seen the gait, you have seen the Turnberg sign. You have noted the attitude of the patient. Now come to the inspection on standing. From the front, these are all the these are all the points which are one is supposed to mark when examining the patient while standing from the front. I'll give you a clinical example. Uh, this is a patient who has got a disease on the right side. Once you are inspecting from the front, make a note whether the head is central or not, whether both the shoulders are on the same level or not. In this patient, right anterior spinal spine is at a lower level, right petal is at a lower level. Please make all these observations while inspecting the patient from the front. Then you inspect the patient from the side. On the side, the things which are to be noted are what is the state of the lumbar lordosis as per the hip joint disease is concerned. Like in this patient, there is increased lumbar lordosis and the right hip and the knee are flexed. As you notice, the patient has been adequately undressed, adequately and decently undressed to examine. Now come we, we go, go to the inspection from the back in the standing position. Once we are conducting the inspection from the back in standing position, all the points should be properly marked. The, the posterior spherical spine, the spinous processes, the gluteal bulge, gluteal folds, and the back of the thigh should be visible to you. And you can make these observations. Like in this patient, the head is central, both the scapulae and the shoulder are symmetrical, right posterior spherical spine at a lower level. Now this was the inspection from the in the standing position. From that we go to inspection in the supine position. Like in this patient, when the patient is lying down, please make note of the level of the anterior spherical spine on both the sides. In this patient, the right anterior spherical spine is at a lower level. The light lower limb in the external rotation And similarly, now you can examine the or you can inspect the patient from the in the lying down position. When you are inspecting the position, patient in the lying down position, make sure that the patient is lying on a firm bed with a firm mattress. Make note of the, you know, I mean, I mean, you must mark the anterior spinal the anterior spinal spine as well as the iliac crest. Make note of any exaggeration in the lumbar lordosis. Make note. Take note of the uh, procentric region and the lateral thigh mass. Uh, this is a summary of the inspection. Uh, we have, I, I mean, I am again repeating the points which I have covered. I have told about the gait, then the attitude of the limb, then inspection from the front, from the side, from the back. This will be the summary of inspection. Now comes the palpation. Once you are inspecting, Please make note of any redness, any scars, any sinuses, any muscle wasting or any ulcers. <clears throat> now the different points to be covered, different steps to be done when the palpation is concerned, the palpation is done. The first point doing palpation anywhere in the body or any system of the uh, medicine is, con is concerning uh, tenderness. As far as the hip joint is concerned, we are concerned basically about the anterior hip joint tenderness. The hip joint tenderness anteriorly is felt or palpated just one centimeter below and lateral to the position of the femoral artery. 
another type of uh, tenderness which is uh, no, which is noticed in uh, patients of hip joint disease is about the bilateral pelvic compression test we are doing a, whenever there is a disease which is affecting the central portion of the uh, hip joint the pelvic compression test will be positive now there are other uncommon sites for tenderness pathology i mean tenderness in different pathologies of the hip joint uh, sometimes there may be a tenderness along the uh, origin of the adductor longus insertion of the iliac swas or there may be a the tenderness at the at the uh, trochanteric bursa or origin of the hamstrings may be tender at the ischial tuberosity but basically we are concerned with anterior hip joint tenderness and by and by trochanteric by trochanteric pelvic compression test which will denote central tenderness continuing the palpation further always palpate the iliac fossa you may find a uh, you may find a cold abscess there or sometimes in cases of protrusio estabuli when because of a disease the estabulum has protruded inside one may be able to palpate the protruded estabulum from the iliac fossa if the patient happens to be a thin patient uh now there is something called digital 3.3 three finger palpation uh though the do brands didn't uh, describe it sometimes it is known as a distal branch triangle with the help of the three fingers with the with the thumb on the anterior spherical leg spine the index finger on the tip of the trochanter and, and the middle finger at the at the at the at the, at the perpendicular going from the anterior spherical leg spine to the floor this is how the how the triangle is made and one is one is supposed to make triangles on both the sides to compare one can make out on palpation whether the trochanter has ridden up or not uh you must palpate continuing the palpation further you must palpate uh, all the possible sites of cold abscess which could be the base of scarpus triangle gluteal lesion supratrochanteric lesion iliac fossa which i have told you already and anterior medial aspect to the mid thigh this is a summary of the palpation uh, basically it is a it is a I'm, uh, super the tenderness the local temperature the tenderness i have told you already uh, anterior hip joint tenderness or bite or about the uh, bitrochanteric compression test uh, you must make a note about the palpation of trochanter whether it is uh, uh, whether it is uh, uh, whether it is hard, hard to touch whether there is any roughness or whether there is any crepitus felt during palpation of the trochanter uh we have already palpated the femoral artery to i mean to locate that point of uh, hip joint anterior hip joint tenderness at the same time either this test can be done in the last or at this juncture also you can compare the two femoral pulses and see if the hip joint you are examining whether it has weak pulses compared to other hip joint if the hip joint you are examining has either weak or absent femoral pulses then vasco sign on the right is positive then i have told you about the Distal branch triangle, or basically uh, trying to palpate uh, with the help of three fingers and trying to find out whether the trochanter has gone up or not. Then I have told you about the sites of palpating cold abscess, and of course, tender muscle we have done earlier. Now deformities, uh, I mean, assessing the deformities of the hip joint disease, a uh, disease is an integral part, integral part of the palpation. And to define a hip fixed deformity in hip joint, uh, uh, hip joint would be. a fixed deformity is defined as a position of the limb from which it cannot be brought to neutral or zero position for that axis but further movement in that axis may be possible may be possible for example if the patient has got a 70 degree of flexion deformity extension will not be possible but it may be possible that the patient has got some more flexion beyond 70 degree this is what is meant by a fixed deformity now this is uh, about uh, Uh, um, a person who has got a uh, hip in a hip joint which is deformed a patient cannot walk unless the body compensates in a case of case of fixed flexion deformity the the compensation occurs by increased lumbar adosis in abduction deformity the compensation occurs by drop of ipsilateral anterior spherical leg spine and scoop and lower lumbar spine scoliosis with ipsilateral convexity in adduction deformity there is elevation of the ipsilateral anterior spherical leg spine and scoliosis with contralateral convexity if you want to measure the exact amount of deformity one must uh, unmask the true deform true degree of deformity by neutralizing these 
compensatory mechanism. That is the basis of assessing deformities in the hip joint disease. Now, fixed fraction deformity can be assessed by the Thomas test. The next video will show you how to do a Thomas test correctly. The patient is lying on a, uh, a patient is lying on a on a hard uh, on a hard bed with a with a firm mattress. One can inspect and confirm by putting the hand whether the lumbar latus is increased or not. Like in this patient is increased, then the opposite hip is flexed. After the hip is flexed to a certain degree, the increased lumbar latus starts to obliterate, and at one point it obliterates completely, like in this patient. When this happens, the hip joint goes into the flexion deformity, confirmed by pressing on the thigh whether the limb has gone to exaggerated lumbar latus and uh, in the exaggerated uh, flexion deformity, and then measure the exact amount of flexion deformity as shown to you. Every step is important. Now, if you want to know what is the range of flexion in a case of flexion, flexion, fixed flexion deformity, basically, is there any flexion possible after fixed flexion deformity or not, then this is a method to do this. Please see it carefully. First, the Thomas test is done in the same manner which I have shown to you. The normal hip is flexed. The flexion deformity becomes obvious. Just press to counter for any increased flexion deformity. Measure the flexion deformity. Then with one hand holding the lower thigh, one can flex the hip, hip further. While with the other hand, one feels the any movements of the pelvis. Once the pelvis starts moving, that is the point to which the flexion is present. So, like in this patient, patient has a fixed flexion had a fixed flexion deformity of 60 degree or so, and is almost further flexion is possible till about 80, 85 degrees. So he has a free range of about 25 degree or 20 degree of free flexion after the fixed flexion deformity. Now there is a situation called a pseudo flexion deformity. Sometimes the disease is not in the hip joint, but there is a irritating lesion in the vicinity of the hip joint which is forcing the hip joint into pseudo flexion now this is a patient of a pseudo flexion deformity because of a psoas abscess now how to differentiate a pseudo flexion deformity from a true flexion deformity please see this video carefully in a case of pseudo flexion deformity when the disease is not in the hip joint the rotation will be free and painless in this patient Rotations are free and painless. If the patient had hip joint disease, the rotations would have been painful. At the same time, in the same patient, if you try to do the try to do the Thomas test, the child cries. This is a typical example of a typical case of a pseudo flexion deformity in which case hip rotations will be free and painless now how to measure uh, if a patient has got a bilateral flexion deformity of the hip joint how to measure that this is the classical method this is a classical method The patient is made to lie prone on the examination table. Both the hips are flexed, which will obliterate the lumbar laduses. Now the one hand remains on the lumbar, uh, lumbar spine. The other hand extends the, extends the uh, hip gradually. The, at the point where the hip joint, the lumbar laduses starts reappearing, is the amount of flexion deformity of that particular hip measured in this manner. The same thing is repeated on the other side. Now, this um, this uh, uh, this method becomes sometimes uh, impractical in the patient uh, happens to be an adult and heavy. In that situation, I think I have described a new method of testing uh, flexion deformity of the hip joint in in, in cases of when when there are, when there is a bilateral hip involvement. 
the patient is made i think this is the, this i have not found this method in the literature and i feel that i am i am the first person to describe it in this patient in this case the both the hip joints are are flexed when the till the time the lumbar nerve disappears the one limb is held by an assistant while the other limb is gradually extended at certain point the lumbar nerve starts reappearing one can measure the flexion deformity in this manner also the same thing is repeated on the other side now how do we measure a fixed abduction deformity we are talking about deformities we have seen how to measure fixed flexion deformity we have seen what is the normal what is the range of flexion beyond flexion deformity and how to measure bilateral flexion deformity of the hip joint now we come to the adduction deformity how do we measure the adduction deformity as i told you earlier we have to unmask the deformity in a case of abduction deformity unmasking is done in the manner shown now this patient has got a abduction deformity on the left side the deformity is unmasked the anterior spinal cilic spine was at a lower level the limb is abducted till the two anterior spinal cilic spine becomes square and then the amount of abduction deformity can be measured now uh, there is one more method of measuring abduction or adduction deformity by kothari's angle uh, in the previous method which was described by nelson also known as nelson's method we had to square the limb while in the case in the method described by kothari there is no need for squaring the pelvis in whatever position the uh, the, the two anterior spinal cord spines are one line is drawn to join the two anterior spinal cord spine then a perpendicular is drawn from the anterior spinal cord spine to the midline another from the anterior spinal cord spine of the left side to the midline as shown in the diagram in a case of abduction deformity this will be the and so the line joint so above the line joining the anterior cilic spine so in this kothari's method there is no need to square the pelvis same principle is followed that the anterior spinal cord spine of was on a higher level the limb is moved to adduction and the the pelvis has become squared now one can measure the deformity in this manner so square the pelvis and measure the deformity as is shown in the method dr sudhir please uh, be slightly fast okay dear a uh, further range of adduction the same principle as uh, flexion to and as in the flexion deformity of the uh, hip joint uh, unmask the <coughs> adduction deformity and the and see for any further possible adduction i'll not uh, run this video because of post of time <coughs> then measure the fixed rotational deformity which can be gauged by seeing the position of the uh, great toe direction of the great toe or by this method in which uh, two lines are drawn one is towards the one is a plumb line another is the line which is uh, which is cut, which is towards the roof from the center of the patella this is a summary of the deformities a uh, movements we have to see uh, <clears throat> i'll just uh, make a mention of this uh, dunham sign this has been uh, there have been several names for this sign uh, basically this is a sign in which uh, in, in in which with, uh, this was classically described in old Uh, sub cap the slip capital femoral epiphysis but it's been described in now in avian also in in which case when we flex the hip joint at particular point the flexion stops and further flexion is possible only if the hip is taken to external rotation let us see further flexion further flexion possible only if the hip is taken into external rotation fine these are all the movements you are supposed to see 
these are summary of the movements uh, now we come to measurements measurement to be true uh, measurements and the apparent measurements apparent measurements are in the whatever position the position the patient is lying from any central point of the body we measure till the till the middle malleolus without squaring the pelvis uh, in the two length we square the pelvis by uh, i've shown you the method already by how to square the pelvis we square the pelvis and then measure the two length like in this patient i'll show you one example only in a case of abduction deformity this is the apparent length it is measured uh, the limb is squared now and the length is measured the opposite limb which was a normal limb must be taken into similar degree of abduction to measure the two length which is being done now now you measure deformity i think i'll rush through the rest of the rest of the presentation now this sign will tell you grossly whether there is a shortening of the limb uh, limb or not i mean the the patient lies supine hip is flexed uh, hip is flexed to 60 degree in the knee after 90 degree and look for the level of the two uh, knee joints if there is a shortening the uh, the affected knee joint will be at a proximal level in a case of hemorrhage shortening uh, a brand triangle is drawn as i told you already by uh, by joining these three points anterior spinal spine the tip of great but the tip of the great pointer and the anterior spinal and the and the perpendicular is drawn to the bed and then we measure all the three limbs like in the, this is a base on the right side you can see the short knee one uh, <clears throat> this is a method of measuring qualitatively not quantitatively qualitatively the uh, supratracheal shortening with the help of the nettles line the patient lies on the side the hip the affected side of the hip is uh, limb is uh, the hip the hip and knee are flexed and one sees the level of the trochanter whether it is at the same level of the line joining the anterior spinal cord spine the scale to grossly this is a normal situation in a, in a case where the supratracheal This is another method of seeing whether the whether there is a shoemaker's line, whether the whether whether the superficial is shortening or no or not. The line joining the tip of the greater point anterior spinal line is spinal spine is extended further to the midline. If there is a superficial is shortening, this line these two lines will intersect on the opposite side and below the umbilicus. I think I leave this. This is a summary of the measurements. Uh, these are the special tests. I will not uh, tell you the details. Only two tests are important. This is a telescoping test. If if the hip is unstable, this is how the telescoping test is done. And this is about the about how to measure the hip antiversion. Uh, this is the last slide. This this uh, uh, I mean you want to see whether what is the antiversion of the hip joint. The patient is lying supine. the the hip is extended and the knee is flexed knee is flexed in that position hold from the ankle with one hand while the other hand while the other hand palpates the trochanter find the position of the limb in which the trochanter is most prominent in that most prominent position of the trochanter measure the angle made by axis of the tibia with the perpendicular this is the angle of antiversion i think i'll finish here on the last one must make a note of uh, uh, note of uh, note, uh, note of the uh, lymphadenopathy and the contra the contralateral hip and knee joint i think i'll finish here and basically uh, this i have given you a glimpse of what is the, what is the full presentation of the hip joint disease if anybody is interested then
this is the, the my book is available uh, by serious publishers thank you so much sorry manish if i have taken a lot of time no.